So we are at number 26, Green Street. In 1976, drummer Stuart Copeland moved into this apartment in Mayfair. And this is where the band first started rehearsals, before they were famous. And it was that building there, right behind me. The band came together amid the thrash and the passion of punk. But the police didn't sound like punk. In fact, the police didn't sound like any other band before or since. They created a sound and a style of rock that was way beyond the average punk band. By the mid 80s, they possibly were the biggest band in the world after selling over 75 million records. This is the story of synchronicity, conflicting egos and internal tensions that eventually drove them apart. This is the story of one of the 80s finest bands, The Police. American drummer Stuart Copeland met ambitious singer-songwriter known to his peers as Sting at a local jazz club. Stewart's band had recently split up and he was eager to form a new band to join the growing trend of the punk scene in London. Sting was less keen but realised the commercial opportunities. Stuart Copeland had decided the name even before forming the band. The Police, a provocative name that capitalised on the everyday brawls that broke out between the punks and the law enforcement. A regular police presence in the streets of London meant free marketing for the band. Sting's real name is Gordon Sumner. He was nicknamed this because of his habit of wearing a black and yellow striped jumper. Guitarist Andy Summers was a decade older than Sting and Stewart. He was a music industry veteran who had played with Eric Burden and The Animals. And unlike most punk rock groups at that time, they were all skilled musicians. The power trio of Copeland, Sting and Summers were able to draw on influences such as reggae, jazz and progressive rock. They were criticised by other punk rock bands for not being authentic and lack street cred. The truth is the police merely utilised the energy, the disillusion with 70s Britain that the punk rock movement was all about. The police signed to A&M Records in 1978 and released Roxanne, but it failed to chart. And the same thing happened with their following singles, Can't Stand Losing You and So Lonely. The police set out on an American tour of the summer of that year and travelled across the country in a rented van. In the summer of 1979, Sting appeared as the ace face in the Who's movie, Quadrophenia. The police performed on top of the pops with the reissue of Roxanne. This gained the band some recognition in the UK when it peaked at number 12. The following year, in October 1979, the band released their second album, Regretta de Blanc, and it became the first of four consecutive number one studio albums in the UK. Following the number one hit singles, Message in a Bottle and Walking on the Moon, by 1982, The Police were a hit-making machine with number one albums and the hit singles Every Little Thing She Does Is Magic, Invisible Suns and Spirits in the Material World. And by 1983, The Police released what would be their final studio album, Synchronicity. However, the recording process was a tense affair with increasing disputes among the band. The three members of the band recorded individually in separate rooms. And Sting was starting to gain more film roles, most notably his role in the film Dune. As Sting's fame rose, so did his relationship with Stuart Copeland further deteriorated. You look kind of funny. <laughs> Sting and I have this polar relationship where we're either screaming at each other or all three members were starting to have success with interests beyond the band. Stuart Copeland was starting to become a successful composer for film scores. Sting was a rising star as a solo artist, actor and considered to be one of the wealthiest musicians in the world. 
Also, Andy Summers' solo career included recording, touring and composing for films. In July 1986, the trio reunited to record a new album. However, Stuart Copeland broke his collarbone in a fall from a horse and was unable to play the drums. The police have reunited several times over the years, briefly, mainly for charity events and to mark the 30th anniversary of the reunion tour in 2007. In February 2008, the band announced when the tour finished, they would break up for good. There will be no new album and no big tour. The final show took place on the 7th of August in 2008 in Madison Square Garden and the rest is history. It always amazed me that a three piece group such as The Police had such a huge sound and just like The Beatles before them they were only around for a few years but yet managed to have lots of great hits, hits that are still remembered to this very day. A member of this next band had an obsession of blowing up toilets. To find out more about this eccentric character, click on this video right here. <laughs> 